thank you to the SANS team for inviting uh, me today. I am so excited that Natalie and I get to uh, be here. Uh, it's a tough act to follow uh, Rob, I gotta say. His energy, his knowledge, and his experience uh, definitely uh, really a great segue into what we're gonna be chatting about. So uh, I gotta tell you, I am a, I'm excited, but I'm a bit nervous because I spend most of my day speaking with adults, um, probably the same age as most of your parents. And we talk about career changing into a career in cybersecurity. So uh, I've got Natalie here today. Uh, and Natalie is going to be, you know, helping me out to keep things real, keeping them, uh, you know, to, uh, exciting as well because sometimes I'll go off into my own tangents of talking about you know careers for adults and cybersecurity and now we're going to bring it down and make it really relevant for you and help you to find your pathway into um, choosing uh, the right education path as you start to look at how do I get started in cybersecurity. So I'm going to take a moment to introduce Natalie. Natalie is uh, 18. She's currently a freshman at Ryerson University. Uh, yes, where I am. And uh, she's currently doing her BCom, Bachelor's of Commerce in Hospitality and Tourism. Nat, you wanna say hi? Hi everyone, so great to be here with you all today. Uh, this is my mom, as I said before, she's Director of Training Certification at Roger Cybersecurity Catalyst at Ryerson University. Um, I will moderate the Q&A today, so any questions that may come along or previous questions that we've heard before, I will gather them at the end. And mom, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's right. just start. We're just going to yeah. start. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you said at uh, the start, you work with people who are changing their careers. What exactly do you mean by that? So... I'm glad you asked that question because, you know, uh, as you're most of everybody that's on here is looking at their first career and that's going into cybersecurity. Uh, but a lot of, I, I tend to work with adults who are in the midst of changing their career and they want to join the cybersecurity field. And these are individuals who are looking at a second career change. For some, it's even a fourth career change. And these are individuals who would be chefs, accountants, lawyers, engineers, uh, IT professionals. Uh, we've even been working with um, law enforcement and police officers who are making a full career change into cybersecurity. And I kind of think it's cool. We've even had recently a ballerina who scored, um, you know, professional ballet dancer. So we'll call her ballerina. Uh, she scored one of the highest on an aptitude assessment in cybersecurity and is now pursuing a career in cyber. So that's where I spend most of my days. And why that's relevant to know is because they're asking the same questions that many of you are currently asking. How do I get started? Do I have to go back to university? Do I have to go to college? Um, how many years is this going to take me? What's my pathway into pursuing those cool jobs that Rob just talked to us about? So when I say career change, that's, you know, what I'm doing is I'm helping these individuals uh, to figure out, you know, how do they get started? All right, so cool. So a lot of you guys aren't doing career changes at all. You're trying to get into your career as cyber as you could be. Uh, like me. Um, I have an interest in cybersecurity and I think it's a really cool career choice. Um, but like my mom just said, do I need to go to college or university or do I need to start gathering experience to get started in cybersecurity? Wow, Nat, you go straight to the tough question right away. Um, <laughs> so, you know, there's lots of interesting pathways now into cyber that weren't there before. So if we looked back, you know, Years and years ago, there really were, was never a direct pathway into cybersecurity, and cybersecurity has always had this mystery around it. And I think now what we're seeing is that there's pathways, you know, what Rob was talking about, the different roles. So how do you get into those roles? There, you can go to college, and you can specialize inside a college program. There's university degree programs that you can uh, definitely go into and through computer science, 
and engineering and take a minor in cybersecurity. We're not seeing a lot of majors yet in cybersecurity. There's lots of master's programs in cyber. But then there's this interesting space that's being created. And I think it's the coolest part of cyber education. And it's a bit of a gray space and that's the micro credentialing. So that's what, you know, what you're doing right now at SANS. You're kind of building up your micro credentials by playing the CTF game and you're gonna get your badges and you're building your skills, very specific skill sets. And that's what starts to build your capabilities. Um, that builds up the next layer to get you to deeper into cybersecurity. And those micro credentials tend to get even more important as your career develops in cyber. And we see a lot of individuals graduate from university programs in cybersecurity, in engineering, and they're now adding on uh, micro-credentialing. So micro-credentialing, if you think of it, it's kind of like, um, for those who may not really understand the concept, it's you go and you receive a, you're, you're in a, let me think of this. You are in a trade and you wanna become a welder. And a welder needs to have a certain amount of hands-on skills. And they take a course on a specific tool in welding. And that provides them with a certificate to say that they can use that specific tool in welding. And now that certificate becomes their opening at a job that can verify that they have the skill. So that's what a micro-credential in cybersecurity does. So it gives you the ability to say that you have hands-on specialized training that's been gained through very short training program uh, and you have studied it and now you have put your hands into it and now you have this micro-credential that allows you to um, demonstrate your skill. And that's becoming really a cool, interesting way to break into the field is by gaining these micro-credentials. But I also am going to say that, you know, as you start to think about your world of cybersecurity, there's so many different places to go. There's definitely the hands-on, um, you know, the hacker mentality, the ethical hacking side of protecting and defending. Uh, but then there's this entire side of forensics. And when I go into that, I mean law enforcement and cybercrime. So you have to say, okay, maybe I'll go to university and I'll take a course that, you know, a degree in criminology and top it off with micro credentials that allow for me to work in a cyber unit inside law enforcement. Uh, we're starting to see more around policy and governance. So if you have an interest in cybersecurity governance and laws and regulations, and then build a pathway in university or college towards that, but then start to look at these micro credentials that come out that support your learning. So you understand the impact of cybersecurity. You understand what the hackers are doing as you're building policy. You start to understand who the threat actors are. And you know, you're know you starting to look at, there's so many free resources that are available right now. It's one of the coolest times I think in building a career in cyber is to go and do this research and start to really look at, you know, through these resources, what exists. <coughs> sorry, in computer science and in um, different programs. And that's gonna help you and allow you to figure out, you know, do I go to college? Do I go to university? And what do I start to really focus my career in, in, in cyber? All right, so it, even though there's two different pathways, like college or university, but what about taking a gap year to build those experience that you say to add on to your credentials is that a possibility as well good question we were just chatting about this last night uh, about um you know the importance of a gap year and that gap year is interesting in cybersecurity because it allows for you to go and do an internship and build skills um, that you may not have so definitely Right now, I will tell you that in the United States, more than Canada, 
there are more opportunities for individuals who have no work experience in cybersecurity to qualify for really good entry level internship opportunities. And these organizations, Deloitte, um, the NSA, uh, FBI, some of the banks, they're offering these ground floor internships to start building skills for individuals um, you know, who are coming out of high school and wanting to take a bit of a break before pursuing a university degree or college or working on their micro-credentials. And they're building up capabilities within individuals with an interest of cybersecurity. So of course you're gonna be tested, you're gonna be, um, but to be able to qualify for these internships. But at the same time, these one year gaps are going to, as you're working and you qualify for an internship and you choose that path, I think what that's doing is it's building interesting skill sets. It's developing great communication skills, first of all. It's allowing you to also see inside an organization that you would never be able to um, have access to see. Uh, you're starting to build your own capabilities and building your mentoring, your mentors. So those mentors are going to come out of it that Rob spoke about, and they're going to start to work with you. And they're going to teach you what they have learned. And now when you're ready to go back to university or into uh, college, you've now gained real life experience that you can apply to that, to your learnings uh, as you work on your degree. So I really encourage you individuals that are listening to start to research uh, around, you know, if you're in grade 12 or in first year of a college or university program, to take a look at these internships. I think they're extremely valuable. And you know the job opportunities that come out of this is going to be immense. We're seeing organizations such as Google uh, right now saying that they will value uh, an individual's uh, work experience and their micro credentials um, as much as a university degree. So that's been a big shift in uh, hiring. And I think it's showing and demonstrating that organizations are valuing that hands-on work experience that they can give to help people uh, through to get into the industry. So that's really cool for someone in grade 11 or 12 to start looking at. Um, but also if you're in grade 11, 12, even 10, uh, right now, what can you do to start planning on what they need to do if they are interested in a career in cybersecurity? Just besides doing all these research in uh, cybersecurity, what else can they add on top of that? So, you know, this is a really good time to, you know, today, you guys uh, that are all on this call on, in the meeting, you're going to start the CTF, the capture the flag. That is a great place to start. You're going to learn um, how to collaborate. You're going to learn how to think. You're going to be challenged. You're going to start to see um, what cybersecurity is all about. And especially if you don't really know if this is for you, it's such a good place to start. And I know you're going to be hooked on uh, CTF and you're going to love the game. But also take advantage of um, the SANS uh, Cyber Aces and take a look at foundations, take a look at um, Cyber Star America. All of these resources are there to start to get you to go um, further into determining is this the right path for you. But I am also going to say learn Linux. If you, right now, at this moment, if you can start, just open up a book go online, watch a video, listen to a podcast, and you start to understand Linux. You know, we heard Rob talk about the, you know, the working in the command line and suddenly the commands sound like a foreign language, but that's exactly it. It takes years and years to master, but if you can start that now, I, your careers are going to take off in cyber. And it's not just in cyber. You're going to really get to understand adversarial thinking, you're going to start to um, create, uh, you know, solutions that have never been thought of before. And you're going to have a real unique ability uh, to position yourself as head of the game and not have imposter syndrome by the time you're looking at uh, joining the workforce. So if you can learn Linux, uh, Kali Linux, it's free, download it, um, take a look at it, and uh, maybe form a club. Uh, I think that's um, one of the best bets to start looking at for yourselves as well. 
All right, that sounds very interesting. Um, uh, so you're always saying that puzzles and gaming is a very key part into beginning your journey into cybersecurity. And so cybersecurity education all about games and like what aspect is like video games and that kind of stuff tie into cybersecurity? I think that you might be better to answer some of these questions uh, on uh, the video game side than I am, or uh, the individuals on, uh, you know, listening in. Uh, definitely, you know, you, the problem solving that games provide, the ability to think creatively to win. So even if you're playing a card game, uh, you know, it could be uh, any of the games that we play, Crazy Eight or... Uh, I don't know, I'm forgetting some of the names that we put, but Monopoly or puzzles and chess, uh, all of those types of games start to really challenge the way you start to look at patterns. So in cybersecurity, it's all about looking at patterns, lots of data. So you wanna start understanding patterns of thinking. Now you wanna look at your, how do you flip the way that you're looking at and you're defending. So somebody had actually asked blue team, so you're defending yourself, but now you wanna come on the attack. So what is the way that you start to think when you want to come on the attacker side? And what is that blended approach, the purple team approach that we heard from Rob? And so all of this new ways of thinking and expressing yourself comes out in games. Uh, you know, you were telling me earlier about developers having open access in games. What's that all about? Um, so if any of you know what an RPG game is, so kind of like Skyrim, Oblivion, or even like in Minecraft, so you can always create little mods that can enhance the game, whether it be from the visuals looking better to new skins, different skills, opening different maps. So it's the developers of the game leave it open for you to innovate in these games and try to put your own into it, enhance it. And so that's kind of also a key jumping start to get into coding and cybersecurity it allows you to think differently more as a developer and less of a player. And same with um, Minecraft. Uh, everyone knows about those Minecraft sheets that you can find online, you put them in and it's like a, you kind of basically start writing your own code in a way. And that's just kind of a really good stepping stool for you to get into it. So especially in those RPG games where you can create your own mods. I love that. So. so there you go, everybody. There's uh, different ways to start um, really experimenting and pushing your own limits and learning about coding and the amount of pathways that, that exist into cybersecurity or how you build your interests and develop your skills. It, it's uh, more than ever now that, than I think has ever been it, 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 that we've seen. And I can tell you, at this very moment, there's over 150,000 jobs that are currently vacant in cybersecurity. And the number is only gonna to continue to grow. And those numbers of job vacancies is because we are really working so hard in the industry to attract individuals such as yourselves to start really looking at cybersecurity as a profession and the younger you can start in, in looking at it and considering it and playing around with it, that's the cool thing. It is easy to play around with. It's um, easy to get your hands into it, you know, start breaking stuff, go in and, and play the games that Natalie was just telling you about. Go and try CTF today. And the rest of it, you know, following your college, your university versus uh, micro-credentialing, all of that will start to come into place for you but you just need to start getting yourselves into it. And the more you research about the technology, those other pathways are gonna open up because you're gonna to start to see where your personal interest is. And, and I cannot stress enough how much, how important that is, is to start to look at where am I interested in this big role of cybersecurity. And uh, you know, we look at it from currently protect and defend. And that's protecting our communities, protecting our schools, protecting our municipalities, our cities, our states, um, as well as our financial institutions. And a lot of it, you have to start protecting the most vulnerable and learning how to do that. And that's, you know, the younger uh, students, the younger kids in your life who are exposed um, to a lot of cyber issues. 
and also to the elderly in your life, to your grandparents. So spend some time with them and teach them some good cybersecurity hygiene, and you're going to start to learn it yourself. And uh, that's where a lot of this will begin. And you know, following those pathways into university will become more. Uh, those options will become more visible to you. I think we're about timely. I, I don't remember what time we're at, but should we take a few questions right now? Oh, yeah, that's great. Thank you very much. All right, so the, the main question I wanted to ask to start with is, um, do you think it's better to get a degree in computer science, cybersecurity, or even computer engineering if you want to get into this field? Wow, that's a loaded question. There's so many pathways and it depends on the university. So I got to say, not all universities have cybersecurity as a major right now. Universities are, they, it's hard for universities to create a course that is relevant at the immediate time. So where that SANS micro-credentials are relevant and always updated in real time and relevant to today's needs and looking always into the future. A university will have a, um, a, a degree and it'll be in computer science and a part of computer science will be dedicated to cybersecurity. There's not a lot of universities right now that have a full on cybersecurity um, uh, undergrad. So you have to start to look at what is it that you wanna focus on. So I would say if you are looking in cybersecurity, definitely go for an undergrad or I'm not gonna say definitely, but explore the opportunity of a comp sci with a cybersecurity minor and then start to look at what other add-ons you can do in micro-credentials on your own. Okay, thank you very much. Um, let's see. So someone asked about a PhD, right? So I was gonna ask the question, right? Is there any value to actually having a PhD in cybersecurity and does that actually gain you anything in the field? If you're looking at research and you're really keen on research in cybersecurity, we are desperate, like throughout the world, looking at the impact. Uh, we need researchers, we need the PhDs, we need the individuals who can take on future projects, such as, you know, we 5G. What is the impact of uh, connected devices and 5G and supercomputing? That's a research question. That goes out to the universities. That's what the university's PhDs are spending their time on right now uh, in Canada and in the US, trying to understand uh, how does this all work, this connected world, and the faster the computers get, the easier it is and the faster it is to go undetected when there's a breach. And what? And so that's where the PhD side comes in. So if you're committed and you're looking at these future problems and knowing that there's research behind it that needs to be conducted, oh yes, please do pursue a PhD in cybersecurity. Thank you. Um, and then what about like, let's call it the alternative path. So people who don't necessarily go to college and everything else, is there maybe a, a cyber security credential that you might rank as being something worth pursuing as opposed to getting formal education? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm a bit biased. <laughs> you know, I, I do think that the gray area in education is coming up more and being recognized um, with equal um, respect in, in cybersecurity by employers. So as much as university degrees are respected by employers, so are the credentialing. So definitely the SANS um, 401, uh, 504, these are your entry level um, credentials that get you started. So, you know, I'm gonna challenge all of the kids that are on this right now, go look up what these courses are, SANS mm -hmm. 401 and 504. But, you know, the more that there's other programs as well um, that, will, that are credentials that you can go and receive and start to look at, you know, Palo Alto has some great ones. Uh, there's also great resources that we're seeing from CompTIA to get you started. But I do gotta say that the SAN, I've never seen a program and credentials that have opened up doors for 
individuals as much as the SANS credentials have, and that um, companies look to and immediately say, I know exactly what this person has learned, and this gives me confidence in hiring them. And I, I think we're going to start to see that more becoming a pathway into a career into cybersecurity as individuals start to see it. It's fast and it's a quick way to get the career going and employers know what it is. And, um, it, you know, if university and college is not the right path for you, I do strongly think sit with your guidance counselor, sit with your parents and show them these other pathways into the career.